FM. The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Now. It's just for you. Kiwi. 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 102.2 Auckland. The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Ads with Simon Pound from simonpound.com. Talking ads with uh, Simon Pound from simonpound.com once again. Hello to you, Simon. G'day, Glenn. How are you, sir? Very well. Joining us um, from his, uh, well, it looks like his wardrobe, actually. <laughs> <Today>. <laughs> My uh, lady is a fashion designer, and I've uh, sne- snuck, snuck into her workroom. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Well, um, today we're talking about some, not, not, uh, not something that's tr- uh, traditional, I suppose, when it comes to advertising, but something that, that's happened uh, more by chance and, uh, and virally, I suppose, just in the last 24 hours. Yeah, last night there was the David Tua Friday fight, and um, a lot of people watching Moldy TV who may not be uh, regular Moldy TV viewers, which is a shame because it's a wonderful uh, station, and their current affairs show, Native Affairs, is probably uh, the strongest current affairs show New Zealand has by a long shot. But um, anyhow, so a lot of sports fans, a lot of other people were watching Moldy TV who wouldn't normally. And they have uh, quite wonderful idiosyncratic advertising that is very similar to advertising that you get on uh, a regional television station. Like, you know, say if you're in Christchurch, you'll see ads for Christchurch uh, things. But the, the very specific to uh, Moldy TV, including one for this thing called the Multi Kai Cooker. <laughs> yeah. And out of nowhere, it, it was the first time that I've been watching um, a sporting event. And the, the tweeting around, and this sounds pretty pretty nerdy but the tweeting around the event was actually probably more entertaining and of more interest than the event itself and i was first alerted to the multi kai cooker uh because i was um sitting there doing some work and then thought oh, i'll watch the fight and clip, flip, flipped over to twitter and everyone's like tweeting about oh i don't know why but i suddenly feel like buying a multi kai cooker <laughs> and i think i'd better call doug and i was thinking what's all this about and then the next ad break, this ad comes on, and it's an ad for uh, a, a, a kind of stacked thing that has these baskets that you can put all of the different varieties of food you want to uh, put into a hungi uh, and, and cook it there. And then on the ad, it says, you know, buy a multi-kai cooker, call Doug. Uh, and it, just, it, was, it was quite a sweet ad and quite cool and, um, and, and a bit of fun. And before you know it, like, if you were to go now, and do a search in Twitter for the multi kai cooker. Hundreds of tweets, people all around the country, are, are were just taken by this advertisement. <laughs> yeah, I'm just was, looking was, at, at some of the tweets from last night. Uh, someone there saying, um, in light of Tua's win and our mad um, 2 a.m. post run this evening, we're considering auctioning a multi kai cooker. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing. Like, it, it, it was multikaicooker.co.nz, uh, I, I believe it is. I've got the website here somewhere. Um, it, it's the address. And all kinds of people actually went and had a look at what it is. And they found out that a multi-kai cooker will cost you $1,500. Uh, that uh, <laughs> There we go. If, if anyone's watching on the online stream, you'll see that there's a picture of it there. But it, it really worked. Um, you know, the thing an advertisement would love to have happen is you play it on the television at something like the David Tua fight and then next thing you know everyone's actually jumping on to try and find your website and talking about it yeah. and it just went crazy. Uh, Mr Vintage the t- t-shirt manufacturer was um, all up in the piece and I don't think it'll be long before we see a multi kai cooker t-shirt or some description <laughs> yeah. and all kinds of people like, uh, like, 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 like people that advertisers would kill to have uh, being advocates for their brand People like Andrew Mulligan, who does the sports shows uh, for the Sky Television Network. Uh, people like Scribe and P Money, real you know, legends and and, uh, and music. Uh, people like Di Henwood, who is um, a massive media figure. These people, um, Holly Smith, all of these people who uh, were at the fight or watching it on television or kind of like watching on television and sitting on Twitter, uh, were all tweeting about this multi kai cooker. And so this guy got all of this kind of free exposure and love uh, just by doing quite a, a really authentic, warm style of advertising. Is this is this anything that like admin can predict can happen, or can this only ever happen by chance and only ever be created by a community? Well, I reckon the cool thing is that it was by chance. People just saw it and liked it and then wanted to talk about it. 
Um, if uh, when it first started popping up, I wondered if the people at Maori Kai Kuka hadn't said to some people, uh, "Hey, if you tweet about this during the fight, uh, I'll give you something." But I don't think that's happened. I haven't completely ruled it out, but I don't. I think it's just that people thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, they're one thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, if anyone would like to form a syndicate and go in, and we could all buy a multi kai cooker together, and then maybe we can have a big multi kai cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 betting, um, uh, you know, without even looking, I, m- I might do a, do a research now. But I'd imagine that it's probably gone off Twitter now and onto Facebook as well. And there's probably a Facebook group for this. There will be something there. Yeah, for a multi yeah. <laughs> multi kai cooker <laughs> fan club. <laughs> so, well, I, I'm I'm a member of that if there's one that exists. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> if, uh, yeah. If, if anyone would like to form a syndicate, I'd like to call Doug and get ourselves yeah. a multi kai cooker. Well, certainly, we'll make an interesting case study for uh, for any ad man that wants to wants to look at it. But talking about ad people, um, they had their awards. The big is it the is it the one and only big awards for the year last week? The access, the thing with advertising is that there seems to be an awards ceremony every couple of days. Uh, you know, somewhere in the world right now, there's an advertising awards ceremony going on. The access awards that happened last Thursday night are uh, the biggest award ceremony for the creative side of things. Uh, the biggest award ceremony for the effectiveness of advertising is called the Effies, and that's, uh, that, 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 that wasn't on last Thursday. This was Axis, which was creative. What they do is uh, they get a number of really distinguished international judges uh, who come over and help to judge the awards, and also have a big panel of local judges, and it's, it's looking uh, over a heap of categories. It's, uh, there's a lot of technical awards as well about um, great creative work of editing or great creative work of camera work and the like. And then, of course, the big awards like uh, the most creative uh, campaign, the most creative business. Uh, and then there's the Grand Axis, which is um, the, the, the overall winner of the entire show. The, the way they do things is they have three categories, a bronze, a silver, and a gold. And, uh, yeah, like, like it's, it's quite usual for a winner to win a couple of golds and then the Grand Axis. Right. But this year, what was unusual was that a special group with their All Come Together Incredible campaign actually won, I, th- I think it's seven or eight golds in total, including the Grand Axis. That's which significant. Is, it's unprecedented in the 30 years from everyone that we talked to on the night. I uh, couldn't think of anything uh, that had won that many awards. So... The thing that's a couple of things are interesting about that. One is that Special is only two years old. It uh, is a company that started two years ago, really hit the public attention for their Green Party advertisements that yep. were uh, they were wonderfully simple and strong uh, before the last election. And this campaign uh, was a an independent agency that's only two years old that has ten staff, ten or so staff, won all these awards while the big, big, big multinational conglomerate companies, uh, they won a, a, a tiny share of golds compared to the small independent. And also the things that they won their golds for were, uh, in the main, uh, areas that traditionally you would... Yeah, traditionally, you'd think that it would be a massive conglomerate that won for a telco, and you might think that a small independent might have won for like a road safety thing or something. Mm, mm. But in this case, the second biggest winner uh, pretty much was a grenade campaign, which was by Saatchi's. Saatchi and Saatchi, it was for the Rodney District Council. It was a really beautiful, uh, amazing campaign where they had the idea that the insight was that when a car crashes, it crashes with the force of 10 grenades going off. So they ran what was a, a genius kind of idea. They went to the Rodney District just a council, they said, we've got this idea. They um, blew up uh, a, a car in a field with mm. the force of 10 grenades, so they had the initial actual, like, the actual thing happened. They filmed that, tried to make it go viral. Uh, they then formed an installation, which was a really cool bit of experiential advertising, and they hired a warehouse, and they reconstructed, if you, if you kind of have a little Google for uh, grenade Saatchi um, video, uh, we, we feature a little bit of it on the ad show, and it will be on our ad show website on TVNZ for anyone to look at the longer links. Yep. Um, this really beautiful installation where they invited people to come into the warehouse, and they, with 
thousands of bits of string from the ceiling actually recreated what happens a microsecond after the impact. So there's these shards of glass and bits of uh, metal and bonnet and stuff flying everywhere and really nice little touches. Like they had a um, soft drink cup from a fast food chain uh, suspended in the air. So a, a, a really amazing, affecting piece of work. So they invited heaps of people in Rodney to come and have a look at this thing, which is experiential, great for getting the people talk about stuff. And then they filmed it looking beautiful uh, as well, which um, was 